Hello there. Right, I'm just going to obviously give the obligatory couple of seconds until I get a feed, until a few of you join. I've got anybody there yet? All right, I've got a video feed. Lovely. Hi, Sandra. How are you? I know everyone else is there watching. Right, we'll crack on then. All right, tonight we're using the Stamparatus again, and I don't know if anybody watched my uh, tutorial this morning, my Top Tips Tuesday, but I showed you how to create a wreath builder template. Uh, so I won't go into that. If anybody, if you like these cards afterwards and you've got a Stamparatus and you want to know how to make it, then um, I suggest you go and watch that that video. But I'm so I'm just going to do the cards tonight. So there's this one, which obviously is not exactly a wreath. But what's a noble wreath? So I'm going to show you how I did that. It's, it, there's nothing, no mystery really. Basically, you do the wreath and then you cut it in half and split it up. But I'll explain it in a minute. And then obviously this is just a usual wreath, a normal wreath. And I have been a little bit naughty. Hi, hi Nancy, how are you? Have been a little bit naughty tonight. I have used a die cutting machine just to cut a die cut. But you don't have to do that. You could have just laid it on the front. I just wanted to create a little bit of interest. But um, yeah, it'll look perfectly okay if you didn't do that. So no problem at all. Also, I did show these on my uh, video this morning, but hey, um, never mind. So the wreath very similar. This one's very similar to what we're going to do. It's just that I do two. I do the light colour green, and then I'm going to do a, another leaf over the top, and then little flowers. I need to just finish this off by putting some little pearls or something in the middle, but we're not doing that one anyway. And also, I did get round to doing a, like I said, would be much better, a big square one. So this card that we're using is much bigger, uh, it was 13 centimetres squared, which I think is about four inches. So yeah, it did a square card. And also there's a little bit of masking involved in that. So I'm hoping if we get the chance and get the time, I'm going to show you how to do that as well, using the same thing. But it's just like building on on the extras of what, of, of what you normally do with it. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to do this one first. I'll take it everybody can hear me okay. I've had issues with sound today, but as I say, oh, we won't go into that because it's just one of those things with technology. So, uh, right, that one. I love the colours in this. These are, I do like Highland Heather and Seaside Spray. It's one of my favourite colours at the moment, Seaside Spray, which is the bluey colour, obviously. All right. So, yeah, we're using the stamp set Tasteful Touches, which is lovely. It's got this floral set, which is that one there, obviously, and then the feather. Hi, Leslie, how are you? Hi, Julie, how are you? Um, so, yeah, this set. Now, oh, just a word of warning, don't do what I did. I bought this and thought to myself, I don't need the dies. I really don't need the dies. I've got enough dies. Then, lo and behold, I go around a friend of mine, crafted with her last week, and... Mm, Saw that she'd used the dies and I was like, oh, why didn't I buy them at the same time and get 10% discount? But I've just got to show you some. So I was a bit naughty. I borrowed hers and cut a few out purely because I know that I want to buy it really. But yeah, these are the die cuts that you get from the die. You probably can't. That's the white. I just so many different colours. Ready to make some Christmas cards actually. So you get a huge big die like this because actually if you see the sentiments on here are quite big. Just saying hello. So that will fit perfectly on there. And then the good things in life are better with you. You get these little banner tags. You get this lovely roundel, which has got a really fancy edge. If you can see that. And lots of little ones and lots of little tags. So, yeah, a little bit gutter that I didn't buy that. So, it's going on my list again now. Because, as I say, I've got lots of other dies. But, no, I need these ones now. Yes, Julie. Oh, I wonder why you wasn't walking. Yeah, I would. It is a lovely set. It really is. But yeah, don't do what I did. If you're going to get the set, you might as well get the dies because you will use them with so many things. Uh, they fit. I'm going to be using the Snowflake Season in the new catalogue. Oh, I didn't bring the catalogue up. The new catalogue. I think, yeah, the new catalogue will be one that's way to people soon if you haven't already got one. You'll be able to order from it next week, August the 4th, if you're, not, if you're a customer and not a demo. Yes, Leslie, it is a gorgeous bundle. But as I say, I didn't buy the dies, but hey-ho, I'm going to now. 
I just thought I'd show you those because we are. I'm using one of them tonight. Don't think I bought a doorbell this one. Oh well, I'll do the naughty way instead. Of it. So yeah, thoroughly recommend those because they are lovely. Uh, so we'll crack on. Right. So yeah, if you think I'm using a proper layer there, but no, it's actually a ninety. Like to go in the in the uh, template. I'm going to move the place and get rid of some of these cards so I've got room. Yeah, that's it. So we're using a square piece, which is 9 centimetres squared, because that will fit in the stamp for ours. And as I just said, if you haven't seen my tutorial this morning and you want to see how, how I created this acetate template, I'll show you how to on there, like, I'll, but rather than going into the depths of it now, hopefully you will be able to understand and follow it. If you don't, please just ask me and I will help you. But hopefully it's quite clear. All right, so we've got that. We do need a stamp set underneath. And we can just go for it. So we're using Seaside Spray and Highland Heather. I'm just going to put my card up so I can actually see it. Uh, Highland Heather. Oh, here we go. Getting messy already. Put them to the side. And hopefully you can see how easy this is. How quick and easy to make wreaths. Yeah, wreaths don't just have to be leaves. You can make that's hence why I'm showing you with a feather, because just to show you, you can use other things. Right now I've got that weighted down with a magnet. Strictly speaking, you could put this down with a magnet as well. But because it will lift up, but I find that because we're turning it, it's just too much time wasting, so I'm not going to bother. Move it. Lovely, Julie. Oh, the paper, yeah, I'm using the paper tonight as well. That, that wood grain, it is gorgeous, the, ideal for scrapbooking, actually. Yes, definitely. Well, excuse me if I'm not watching the comments because I get carried away doing what I'm doing. So, the only thing we've got to remember with this is to alternate our colours. So, we'll start with Highland Heather and obviously clean and in between. But other than that, oh, and then we've got to obviously turn the paper as well. So, Highland Heather. So, hopefully, you can see. So, if we look at this corner here, that corner is going to move to that corner. Simple as. It doesn't have, quite have to fit in the recess as long as you, you've got it in the general idea, general direction of that. Clean the stamp, go in with Seaside Spray. It doesn't matter that it overlaps. See, it will lift up slightly, but that doesn't matter. So I'm going to turn it round to the next quadrant. Clean the stamp. This is where I know I'll mess up, probably, just by not remembering which one I'm using. So Highland Heather. But other than that, you don't have to do any measuring. or it's. You know, and obviously, if you were doing, doing one colour, it's even quicker and easier. Just bear in mind. Obviously, what you can do, and I've, there's no end of things you can do with this, you could just miss that one and go on to the next one, and then you'd get four. Then you could change the colour that way. You could do it that way, actually. I just, yeah. There's the, different people have different methods, but no, it's not that colour. It's one of those things you really need to just do it and have a play. And, so, and although the template takes a little bit of time, once you've done it, you've got it. And you don't have to do it again. You just create really quick uh, wreaths. I'm hoping to do a big batch of them for Christmas. I'll explain to you in a minute what works and what don't work. Yeah, what kind of stamp works really. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Seaside spray. Really is quick and easy though once you've done this. And so you can create any size of, well, depend. Obviously, it's got to fit in the stamparatus. I think the one I made today was four inches, yeah, thirteen centimeters squared. I think that's the biggest you can kind of do before it over goes over your stamparatus really. Uh, 
clean that. Change that right. Uh, am I gonna? Yeah. Thought that wasn't gonna work out, but it should because there's there's eight quadrants, eight corners, so it should work out right. Let's get an even amount of colours. Obviously, it wouldn't if you used three colours. A uh, little tip there. I would suggest only using two or three colours and and or two or three stamps. Otherwise, it can start to get a little bit jumbled looking. Just a tip there. But by all means, have a go. Because I could be wrong. But yeah, try just to keep it a little bit simpler. There we go. So hopefully you can see that. So obviously it looked quite nice on its own, just as a round off. Perfectly good like that. But I wanted to show you another little trick with it, so that's why I did it. Cut it and shunted it and restuck it. So, finished with those. I need to pull the feather off because I need that again. And, yeah. So, then I'm going to get my gorgeous grape. Give us a gorgeous grape and there's some scrap. So I'm just going to stamp the flower. Yeah, the dies in this don't actually cut out the flower or the feather. They are purely just the tags and or labels. So you have to cut this. Still have to cut this out by hand, but. That's, that's kind of why I didn't go for them, actually, because I thought, oh, I've got enough layer dies, I really have. But no, apparently you can never have too many. So I keep telling myself. So there's that one. And we might as well do the label while we're at it. And we'll just put that I think I'm using a slightly different label to the one I used earlier, but it doesn't matter. So I'll stamp that in gorgeous grape. And then I'm just going to get the feather and then stamp that in smoky slate just on the label. I do like to do that, but I'm going to stamp it off. No, not seaside spray, it's smoky slate. There it is. Where do you look? Uh, it's on my, uh, my YouTube channel, Julie. Or you can find it on my business Facebook page. I did put the link there. After when I finish this tonight, I'll put the link to it after this as well. So, you, so you should be covered. But yeah, it's it's um hashtag it's Tuesday Tuesday top tips or top tips Tuesday hashtag number six. So they so say any if you need any more further explanation explanation just yell. There we go. You probably can't see it. It's quite subtle because I've stamped off, but it just adds a little bit of something nice to it. Uh, and while we've got the ink out, I don't know if this is the right one. No, we need... Mm, I think I did Seaside Spray, but I'm going to go with Highland Heather. I am just going to... We're using these gorgeous square vellum. I don't know if you can see that, but those square vellum doilies that's the word so i haven't used these yet so i thought right i need to use them i bought them so i need to use them so same as usual on me briar up full length i've got a little bit of a rip out of my ink pad i don't know how i've done that so and then just briar over it obviously being careful not to go mad on it and look you can create a stencil underneath as well you can do that on your in your cardstock another effective thing you can do with you know just keep one vellum piece of vellum just for that for that job so nice and simple that will all get stuck on there and then I should just cut the excess off. I might as well do it now. My usual messy 
technique. I just put it on the back of my hand, a little bit of glue. Don't do that if you have an allergy, obviously, but I don't know if I'm going to pick it out. No. All right, then I just do that. It works for me. But if you want to put it on, you know, the little cup, you can do. Uh, yeah, I'll just have it to the. I'm doing that a bit because I don't want glue on my work area. So, do that. I'll just let that dry for a little bit before I cut it off. And we can wipe it off straight away. Right, then all we've got to do is we've got to cut this out. And I did with my blender pen. Because I haven't really got any um, Stampin' Blends in this colour or any, any purples. With your blender pen, you can get a little bit of colour from your ink. Or you could go into your ink pad and colour it that way. Which I could do with a Highlands Heather. I haven't done that for a while, actually. Let's see if it'll work. Hi, Elaine, how are you? Nice. So, don't whatever you do, go into your ink pad because this is filled with a alcohol or something. But yeah, you can colour it in just a little bit with your blends if you don't have the appropriate stamp and blend, which I don't. usual I'll just do it very quickly just to give you the idea good to hear Lane congratulations on your brilliant achievement it's no mean feat I can't was it silver is it, is it silver level you reached or silver elite I can't remember silver I think isn't it I think it's, yeah, I'm silver level, so aiming for silver elite, although, yeah, if it happens, it happens. Just a tiny little bit of colour in just to give it a little something. Right, don't forget to clean it. Right. Thank you, Leslie. Yeah, blender pen. Oh, I couldn't be without my blender pens. They they obviously work with the ink pads, but they also work with your watercolour pencils as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck, Elaine. I'm sure you'll get there. It takes a little bit of time, but yeah, it will come. If you keep consistently putting the work in, it will come. Right. And then you have to try and maintain it. <laughs> That's the difficulty. No, it's not actually. I'm, I'm very lucky. I've got good customers. Good team. Just got to cut this out and then we'll be able to put the card together. So, yeah, no dye for this, but it's really quite easy to cut out this flower. Not when you're on time wise. Yeah, it's not too bad. As I always say, I try not to, I don't like taking much more than 40 to 45 minutes on a card. And obviously, if you're doing a batch of them, you need them to be, you know, you need quick ones. But yeah, this um, wreath builder is a brilliant idea. As I say, we do uh, have a wreath stamp in this in our catalogue, in our main catalogue, which I am getting very tempted to purchase because the dies are lovely, but. This still can be a little bit limiting, whereas this, you can use lots of stamps. Okay, you don't have the dies, the die cuts of the wreath, which is handy, but... So it's, it's one of those. 
Wish there was a die for that flower. Oh yes, well Sharon, it, yes, I suppose so. Um, the trouble is when I use dies and flowers, half the time, and I use my um thingy board, I'm a bit naughty because I cut loads out of time. It always shifts for me a lot of the time though, so I end up wasting so much. Then again, I'm quite happy fussy cutting. I don't have a problem with fussy cutting. I know a lot of people do. I know it's a little bit time consuming and boring for you all to watch, but yeah, I, I, I quite like it. It's really not that bad for me. But yeah, I do understand that some people don't like it. Anyway, we are nearly there and we are using this gorgeous new ribbon. This is in the new uh, holiday catalogue, which you will see next uh, August the 4th. I don't know if you can see it. It's very, um, it's like a pearlescent, but it's got a glimmer to it as well. It's lovely. So I need enough for that to go. It's, yes, it reminds me of mermaid scales. Not that mermaids exist. Well, who knows? They may do. And I need another piece for my ribbon. Yeah, that will do. So yeah, this is in the snowflake bundle, which I say I have got, and I will be doing some samples soon. But I did feel that in July it's still a little bit early to be showing Christmas stuff, so I'm giving give it it to at least August. We've been lucky that we've um got everything early this year by a month, but yeah, I still feel like it's a little bit early to start showing people. So, right, now here we go. So bear in mind this is nine centimetres squared, so we need to cut it in half. So that's obviously 45 millimetres or four and a half. So I'm looking for a pencil. I can mark on the I'm gonna mark on the back. It's symmetrical all round, so it doesn't matter where we do it. Just gonna measure. Well, actually, I don't have to measure, do I? Because I've got my cutter and I can see. But hey ho, double measures and all that. Thank you, Sharon. It is actually my design. I actually didn't case this one, so I can take the credit. Thank you. Sometimes I do case. I have to say, because I'm usually sometimes pushed for time. That's usually the, the case. No, I had a good play yesterday with the wreath builder and um, didn't like everything I did, I must admit. I've just got to think about this, so I've got to put that on there. Ribbon's got to go under. So that's that's all we're doing, splitting it up to create the... Then that goes over the top. Yeah, then I'll put my ribbon over. Right, so glue that on. Ooh. That was loud. And obviously you want to try and get it as even as possible, top and bottom. quick card to produce really if once you've got that wreath builder if you've got the stamper artist i would thoroughly recommend having a go you can create wreaths without it you can um I will, what i used to do before i had the stamper artist i'd get uh get my piece of paper and i would get a die or a, sh a round shape and i would draw very faintly a pencil line on your cardstock and then that just gives you a little bit something to work around but this just makes it so much easier i find it much easier and that on there but yeah not to say that you can't do it without the stamp bras because you can oh gosh it's sticking everywhere so, this is the paper in this suite as well and the tasteful touches suite it's um yeah it's like wood granite tiles just textures basically i could have shown you the back but it is lovely subtle colors neutral colors that pretty much go with anything so they're absolutely are perfect to have in your stash they really are uh, right let's take that there a short piece around the back i do just take this So how we are we all? Have we all been crafting? I hope we have. I know it's quite easy to lose your mojo at the moment, but crafting.
often and by kind of the internet keeps me sane so well and my loved ones I suppose I should count them in of course they do right so that's that I just gotta do the ring I'll do the bow after so I don't know if I don't know why I'm using this I've got my stamp and seal here could have just used stamp and seal on that actually and put it down but it's old habits die hard I use them um, tape very quick and easy to use this is our new one just put a little bit of, you hold your finger on there and that creates a little bit of pressure I mean you don't you don't need a lot of pressure it says no it's decided not to that's it Has it? Oops, right. Oh, lovely Julie. You're scrapbooking while you watch. I don't blame you. I wish I could get into scrapbooking. I really need, I've got so many photos I need to do. I just don't get the time to do it all. I really don't. I need to schedule a date in the diary and so then I do it on that actual day. Maybe at a weekend. Probably when the cyclone season finishes, I probably will get more time because I'll have, I won't be biking at the weekend. So, um, although, you know, I can't bike long miles, and as you know, with my pain in my foot, so there's that as well. So, mount that on there. That's why I haven't stuck the ribbon or anything else, because you want this as flat as possible while you're applying your tape. Berry edge. If you've got berry edges, just smooth it down. Uh, I had everything to cut. <laughs> ha! Oh dear, Leslie. Yeah, I know what you mean. I yeah. Time just. I don't know where time goes. It just eludes me all the time. I'm forever catching my my tail. But so I did. I did start prepping for this yesterday, so I make sure that I had plenty of time because I know what things happen. Oh, what happened today? Oh, yeah, I had to take my, run my daughter because she was meeting her friend. So I took her and then we popped to the sorting office to try and pick my parcel. Only discover that they've now changed the times again to seven till nine, two hour window. So I don't, oh, yeah, my husband's offered to pick it up for me, bless him. He's going to put it in his rucksack on his bike tomorrow because I just, it's difficult for me to get there between seven and nine. I could do, but it's going to be queued, I know. Yeah, and then I say I did my video this morning. There was no sound, so I had to re-record re that. So that put me a little bit behind. But hey ho, we got there in the end. Oh, it's sticky. Yeah, this, these feathers in this set are lovely. I've seen some lovely cards with just the feathers on it. It really is. Lo I do love feathers. Um, that on there. Loop my bow round. This isn't as soft as I thought it would be, but it's it does tie good bows. I guess it's the um the glitteriness in it. But I'm sure it will look lovely with the snowflakes, which I can't wait to have a play with. I haven't ordered many Christmas sets yet because as I say it's a little bit early for me to be thinking about it, but no doubt I will be. That's not a very good bow, Sarah, at all, but hey. And I didn't bring up my fabric scissors. Oh. 
trying to get smaller loops so it doesn't dominate the card. But that's not working at the moment. I'll titivate it later. Rather than spending time on it now. Yeah, those loops are too big, but I will do that later. So now we've all got to just stick that on. Dimensionals at the bottom. Oh gosh, I hope you can't hear my stomach. I just had my tea as well. I don't know why it's rumbling. So glue on the top and we'll just stick that. Should have gone up a little bit more, but I've stuck it down now. So yeah, I'm not happy with that bow where that is. I will sort that later, but you get the general idea of how the card is. And then we've got these gorgeous little, if you can see that they, they didn't come out very well on the fact they're little butterfly gems. And they are in the which in colours are they? Uh, last yeah, they're the old in colours, the last year's in colours. So we're using the seaside spray ones because that's the ink we've used. They're really so sweet. So we'll put them in there. They're like faceted. So they're really um yeah, we'll have it there. And that just finishes it off. So that's that one. Those away or over there. Right, next card is the other wreath. So we get this one, that card. So, as I say, I've already die cut the circle out, but you don't have to use the die cut circle at all. Oh, how have I got love hearts on there? I have no idea. Oh well. And we'll add to the effect. That must have been from the, uh, that's probably from my cutting plate. Obviously needs changing. Uh, 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 so we've got another piece of nine centimetres squared. We'll put that in. And we're using the lovely U set now. We're using this lovely floral one there, which I've already got here. So I'm putting that there on there. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Right, so that one. And then we're using the leaves as well. So the little triple leaves, just because, because that fits in there or what. No, we'll use wildly grateful. fit in the hole yeah just about oh yeah Leslie this is a lovely set I don't know if you saw the video that Stampin' Up posted last week I think I shared it on my well, I did share it on my Facebook page two quick cards but they were lovely I love the I love the punch I have to say what else do I need oh the flower but I've already cut some of them out as well actually so Purely because I want to show you the masking technique as well. Right, what have I done with the flowers? Ah, I said I'd cut some flowers out, but I don't know what I've done with them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're here somewhere. No. Oh, there they are. Bear with me, there we go. I'll sort them out in a minute now, I found them. Right, so... Same as before, exactly the same. Now yeah, I'm going to go in with just as a tip. If you have a stamp set under there, that just gives that just allows you to. You probably can't see it, sorry. That allows you to press on it. So we're going to go with pear pizzazz first. This would probably make quite a nice Christmas one, or just get any. Oh, that's what I was going to do. Before I forget, I'm just going to show you 
what kind of stamp sets you can write. I've got Nature's Beauty here, I haven't even used this yet. There's a lovely little leaf one here. That would be really nice for Christmas, I think. And then you could just put berries on. Don't know if I can get that in focus. That doesn't look very clear to me. And I've done that one. And uh, these ones, although I think the stem might be a bit long. So unless you wanted to cut your stamps off, they'd probably be okay. And these ones definitely would be okay. The leaves. But you've got nice little flowers. And there's a punch that matches these flowers. That's what I made the other card with. Um, so yeah, that would work. Uh, this one I think would work lovely. Any, yeah, and the rose, and any of these, these, all these leaves, anything quite small, foliage related. But as I say, it doesn't have to be foliage related, you can do whatever you like. Just, um, yeah. But you, I think you can see how many, if you've got a stamp set, most, you know, I'm sure most of us have got a stamp set that would work with this technique. very nice if you've got a little holly sprig and then you can make yourself a holly wreath I've only got a big sprig of holly so I just quickly look oh that'd be all right on the big square card but it wouldn't be it'd be too big for this it's got to be proportionate size really as well Just keep going round. No more pressure. But yeah, I just think this really makes the most of your stamparatus if you've got one. Because I'm sure if you have got one, you don't probably use it to its full potential. I know I don't. I am trying very hard to. And hence why I'm trying to demonstrate it a little bit more, really. So, done with that. I'm going to go when I've cleaned up that stamp, go in the mossy meadow. Shut up, don't rub on the table. Change the leaf. I'm just going over the top. You could if you wanted to yeah, do it on a separate paper. Well no, it wouldn't matter. You wouldn't you could just cut some out and put it over the top if you want a little bit of depth. But that's what I'm doing with the flowers, really. Thank you, Elaine. Yes, please give it a try. So once you've made the... I know it's a little bit of a rigmarole making the template. Right, now that's not gone down very dark, but I don't know if I moved it, so I'm not going to redo it. Hence why you should really use the magnet, because then you can stamp again. But for the benefit of Facebook Live, it's just too time-consuming. So give it a good press. By all means, just watch my tutorial so I can explain how I made the template. This looks a bit different to my original. I don't know whether... No, it's probably because I've cut it out, actually. Camera keeps moving, wobbling the table. So... I wouldn't do any more than this leaf wise because I mean you could just stamp some flowers either side or berries that would look very nice See how quickly you could create oh never mind uh, quickly create some a batch of Christmas cards. You just do loads of these and then you know then crack on and make the cards up. Especially if it wasn't cutting it out like I'm about to. You don't have to cut it out as I say. Basically, it with the stamp of artists, I think. So, right, so yeah, as I say, you don't have to cut it out, but I did. 
and this does take a little bit of time so obviously you have to get in the middle right let's try and cut it a hole get your scissors cut a bit out Thank you, Leslie. Yeah, all right. So, and then just take your time cutting because obviously we don't have a die for it. But this is whereas if you had the wreath build, the you know, you just stamp it and we have dies that cut it out. So, I think, oh no, maybe it doesn't actually. I don't know if it cuts out the stamped image. But we have dies that you can just do in cardstock colour, which are very nice. Sometimes the budget doesn't allow that, so. Just take your time with your cutting, really. I'm going to rush it a little bit, but. But yeah, obviously you could have just left the middle in and put a sentiment over the top. You don't have to cut this bit. You could, and then you could have just cut the outside. There's kind of all sorts of things you can do, depending on your time limits, really. Oh, done already. That was quite quick. And then back around the outside edge. I did that quicker than I thought I would. <laughs> Must be getting. Better at cutting. And so you would take more time, as I always say, move the paper, not your scissors, to try and get so you don't want lots of angles. But yeah, I think you can see how it does look a little bit more wreath like when you cut it out, I think. I just like the fact that you can then pop it up on some dimensionals to give it a little bit of height. Look lovely on top of a square box. Our pe oh yeah, pizza boxes, that's an idea. I might have to try that. I'm pretty sure, well it would, our pizza boxes I think are three inch square aren't they? So I'm pretty sure it would be a perfect fit for that. That's just popped in my head. Uh, what was the other one? Thank you, Leslie. No worries. Enjoy your session. You can always catch me on replay. Glad you could join me. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye. That's the fantastic thing about replays. Oh. Gosh, nearly, nearly chopped the leaf off. But yeah, I, I personally like it cut out, I must admit. Nearly done. But yeah, wouldn't that would look really good on a pizza box? I'm going to have to try that. pizza box with some tiny little wreath cards in would be very nice that's my next thing is to do some tiny ones tiny wreaths probably with that stamp out of the nature's beauty because that's really tiny it looks so so cute just got to find something that would be appropriate for the berries or you could use um red dots or red something you know red gems or something colored gems in to make them red berries if you don't have a stamp there's usually a way around it so yeah that's that done Looks okay, doesn't it? Not bad. So, right, so what did I say? You, I cut the circle slightly bigger because you don't want to see it really. Although you can a little bit, but it's not a problem. Which shape cut on the other That was the range of. Yo, that's the one I was talking about, Julie. That is on my, my wish list, and I'm tempted. Yeah, I meant to be placing an order probably tomorrow. So it kind of goes on and then I think, oh, do I really? Yeah, because there's other things I want as well. So 
yeah um i think it'll be quicker if i'm honest one because you get there's if you look on the dies i think there's two dies two die wreaths it cuts out so you would probably be able to cut them out quite quickly and produce you know a lot quicker so it's it's kind of one of them yeah you've got the expense of the bundle but you've got the time allowance so if you want to make use it for christmas cards i would say go for it and use it and obviously ideal for scrapbooking as well so i love the fact also that it's um actually i'll show people because i'm talking i'm talking about it and it's not fair i like the fact that it's not just seasonal it's not just christmas so here it is this is what we're talking about the actual wreath is quite big the stamped image i think that's bigger than you can see like if i show you uh, no oh my gosh look at that so that's pretty much the size so that's a good size almost the same size so that's pretty good isn't it that but what you get you get your like a an uh, acorn or an oak leaf yeah xmas cards really. um but then you've got your flower for spring or whatever time you know your birthday cards it doesn't have to be you've got best wishes happy easter merry christmas you've got your partridge you've got your pears you've got your love heart and you've got your easter eggs plus obviously you could fit i don't know whatever you've got a small image of you could so you know i don't know flowers birds if you had some small birds hearts which we've got on there anyway stars maybe not because that wouldn't really go but you get the idea and idea it's a very good multi-purpose bundle so not just for christmas whereas you know sometimes when you buy a stamp set for christmas it's a little bit short-lived and actually I don't, you probably can't see but the dies you get you get all the dies that buy little things to cut them out any one of these that's shaded in blue there's dies that will cut them all out and this is two images on one stamp the die cuts out two separate shapes so yeah that cuts out two of those you've got two wreaths very tiny you can't see but two different wreath shapes you've got little bows so yeah i am i am still tempted to order i have to say even though i do love doing this method as well but yeah i, I do like my wreaths especially for christmas yeah exactly judy but marvelous for easter or just i just think birthday cards i mean you don't have to have you know wreaths aren't seasonal really you do have wreaths up on a, well america the americans do a lot anyway as well i know but you know they don't have to be just for christmas you could do halloween one halloween wreaths if you do if you're into halloween i'm just going to stick that on over that hole oh i know what i have got to do and that'll probably be easy to do it before i stick it actually i'm gonna no that won't fit what was i going to use wildly grateful what have i done with it i put it down somewhere hmm. <laughs> i've lost the stamp all right it's going to be just because because i don't know what i've done with it no doubt it's right in front of me as usual it's not on the stamp of artists I do this every week. I manage to lose one. Does anybody else do this? Please tell me you do. I'm not the only one. I've only got a small area. How can I lose something? Oh dear, never mind. Right, we'll do just because. Just because. I'm going to do it in Mossy Meadow. And obviously, because you're doing it inside, that counts for inside the card as well. I'll try and get it level this time. Yay! It's level, that wasn't on the last card. Right. Put that there before I lose that. <laughs> oh, you could laugh alone. I do it every week, don't I? I'm terrible. I won't even dare tell you what I did today. With the oh, I put a pan on the hob and without any water in, and I turned the gas on. I can't multitask like I used to, that's all I know. Is I blame it, it is my age, it's getting really bad though. So that's, I have to focus a lot more. Right now, we've got stuff. Yeah, you can bet your bottom dollar that will turn up. Now, as soon as I turn the camera off, that will turn up that stamp. Unless you can all see it in front of me and are laughing. 
because I can't see it for looking. Uh, I think we've got six flour there. That should be ample. Oh, I know what I didn't do. Look, I didn't stamp the flowers. Oh, well. It's going to be a slightly different card. From, oh, I might have a few more then. I didn't actually stamp the images, if you can see this one. I stamped the pink images on the actual wreath. I haven't done that. We just can stick them on. It's going to be a different card. That's what I get when I'm trying to talk and do it at the same time. Right, here we go. Now the camera's full. Right. So mini dimensionals for these would be excellent. Pick a tool. You can put a little bit of shaping into them, but I don't think I'll bother because they're quite small. Gonna leave room at the bottom for my uh, bow tie, whatever you want to call it. Ribbon. It's not ribbon because I'm using linen. So Yeah, I do. I uh, have to be honest. I think I like it with the flowers stamped on, but we'll see. Just try and get them dotted about. You can put them symmetrical if you want. I don't always like symmetrical, especially with flowers, because they don't really grow like that, do they? And so I'm dotting them about a little bit. But you certainly can put them symmetrical if you want. Yeah, if any of you do any of these techniques, I would love to see them. Or these cards, rather. I think that's enough. So, yeah, slightly different from the original, but not wrong. Just different. And we're nearly there. And then I am going to show you so one last technique using the um, stamp apparatus with a masking technique, which is a bit clever. Well, actually, two masking techniques with it. Uh, don't need that. Don't need that. Oh, I did. Oh, didn't bring my glue dots up. Okay, right, so I will need a dimensional and I'll just have to swap that out for glue dot when I go back downstairs. So we're going to create a bow with some linen, a triple bow, which is easy enough to do. So what I do is get my thread three times to the length I want it. ends and then just tie a bow you can do bunny ears and it's just I don't know if it'll work with three let's have a go it might be a bit tricky and all three loops under yeah it might be a tricky normally I would do with bunny ears with one but with this I'm gonna just tie it round and try and get my bow and we've created another nice triple loop. You can even keep the loops together or you can split them up like that. You can see the difference. You can keep them like that or like that. It's up to you. But yeah, ideally you would stick it on with a glue dot. Oh, I've forgotten to pick it up. Put them in. I never forget something today. I'm a little bit tired, I have to be honest. My fault. I was up crafting late till midnight last night. I don't know why I do that, but I did. Uh, Simon always says to me, don't be late, don't spend all night crafting. And then I'm up early in the morning. No, you can't see it too much. But yeah, I will I will replace that with a glue dot. It will look nicer. And just trim your ends. And then I felt it needed a little bit of sparkle. So we've got these lovely gold glitter enamel dots, which were carried over from last time, I believe. I love them. So, oh, oh, and that top's come off that one. Right. If the tops do come off, you can, of course, complain to Stampin' Up! and they will send you some more. They should do. But sometimes when it's just one or two, what I do is I just put a little bit of glue on top. I hope you can see that. You shouldn't have to, but 
it's kind of not our fault because you're meant to actually use the spatula end of the mullet tool. I'll change it now. So that one now needs to dry. Now you're meant to try and push it. Oh, knock that one off again. But I have trouble getting it off, but oh, that's alive. So one up there. difficult with this but it's it doesn't pull the tops off them uh, a few more I've got plenty let's go for it just got a bit oh, they're tiny oh tiny widgy one a tiny one So there we go. You've got your insert already done inside. You could have just, I could have put a piece of white, whisper white inside as well if I wanted to, but I didn't do that. Right. So, no. Thank you, Julie. Right. Let's have them dry. So now what I'm going to show you is how to do this one. I'm not going to finish the card, I'm just showing you the technique. And a, another masking, quick masking technique. If I can find a square piece of cardstock. Yeah. Right. Oh no, they've all been. Uh, I thought I had a square piece of card. Just bear with me to see if I can get a. No, that's not big enough. Ah. No, I did. Right. Yeah, so I'm not going to do full cards. I just want to show you two masking techniques. So is that. Where's the square piece of cardstock gone? Shall I, I'll try and be organised and I still can't. Right, where's that one? I can show on that one. There it is. Yeah, that's the big one. So, oh gosh, no, Dr. Ruler. <laughs> right, uh, I'll start with this one first, I think. I haven't actually done this, so this could be, this is a bit of a trial for me. But, so I'm just going to put that back on there. Oh, people can smell. Stay there. Right, so card back in. It's got a little bit of a mark on, but so this is just a test, just to show you something, a little bit of a play. So earlier with a um, with my masking tape, uh, mask, masking tape, sorry, masking paper and a die, I cut out a heart shape. Obviously, you can cut it whatever shape you like. This is so just a little experiment to see what happens. So it's going to stick the heart in the middle, the masking tape paper. And we're going to go round. Mm. I want to make sure that it goes right over the. Because basically, you want to get the heart shape. So let's go for it. I think we might change the colour because it doesn't have to be. Yeah, let's change the colour. Do Highland Heather. So. I don't know what's going to happen to this, what it's going to look like, but just wanted to step it up a little bit. That's what we want. We want plenty of stamping over the stamp, over the masking paper. Obviously, this is just a simple version. You could change the colours. Oh, 
it's going to look like. Got me thinking now what other shapes I could do. And that's not going to quite cover that side. That's strange. Must be a little bit out. But hopefully you get the general idea. Yeah, it's a little bit out somewhere. I don't know why. Maybe the mask and paper's not in the middle of the cardstock. That, uh, that's probably the reason. I don't know. Anyway, it's just an experiment. Now, here we go for the reveal. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. There we go. And voila, look. So it needed a little bit of something up there. But hopefully you can see that. You've got your masked area. And you could cut your um, another die cut shape in the shape of that and put that over the top for a little bit of depth and dimension. But how cool is that? I thought it was pretty cool. So I might keep that mask actually. So that's one idea. Now I'm going to step up even further. And this does take a little bit of time. But right. Now here's my template I made earlier. And any of you who are observant will notice that I actually did mess it up on my live but you, you probably won't be able to tell but I, I did rectify it so so yeah you can see this is a really big one this is about the biggest you can go so 13 centimeters thank you Julie. yeah it is isn't it I thought it was clever it wasn't my idea I can't I can't profess it was my idea but I thought it was pretty cool so that on there Hopefully this, so bear in mind we're now trying to replicate this one. I don't know if you can see what I'm going to be doing. Each flower looks like it's on top of the other. Now if you did, like I did with the feathers, they just went on top and that was okay. But it could soon look a bit of a mishmash, especially with flowers, a lot of petals. So this is what you need to do for that. But yeah, hopefully I'm giving you lots of ideas so that you can go away with work your magic on so we're going to put that in there making sure that's actually on the card and I'm just using two colors for this you could just use your one you could use whatever colors you, know, you could use you know numerous colors but I, I would keep it just one or two, one or two personally and I use two colors Roco Rococo Rose and Magenta Madness so yet again just hold some space because I've not got a lot of room. Again, just got to remember, and I've got to get some masks out. That's right. Also, where's my taste for textures? A little bit of a trick with me, with your mask making, which I never thought of, but somebody I found out this today. I cut my mask and paper, and instead of doing four individual stamped images, I piled four pieces of the of the of the what am I trying to say this masking paper on top of each other so it's a like a rectangle and I pegged them stamped it so they didn't move and then I cut out four pieces all together and so you get your so although you don't get the stamped image on it you've still got your shape and you've got lots of masks so so much quicker than doing it all individually but that's so that's providing it doesn't move but yeah, you may need one or two masks for this because they do get a little bit wet. So use that one and that one. That, that will move. So we may use, no, I'm not going to use a magnet for that. Or shall I? I might actually. If I get fed up with a magnet, you'll, I'll ditch it, but. You do want it to not move. Right, so first colour, Rococo Rose. Ink it up. Stamp it down. Lovely. Mask it before I forget. Making sure your mask is well and truly in the right place. A little bit. So yeah, this does take a little bit of extra time. 
but I think it's worth it. There's no way you'd get this lovely clear images without masking it. So that's now covered. Clean your stamp and then with your other colour. And of course you've got to turn it round as well. So it's exactly the same as before. You're just masking off beforehand. So it's just another little extra step. But hopefully, so when you can see, because we've masked it off, it looks like it, and that one's already booked, you see. It was behind. You get a little bit of overhang, but if you're colouring it in, you don't really notice that. So we'll go again, turn it round, pin it down, clean your stamp. And yet again, the trick is making sure you mask it again. I'll use a clean one. And then making sure you use the right colour. So you've just done Mag uh, Magenta Madness. So the Cocoa Rose now. your mask off and it's underneath how pretty is that yeah again obviously would work with numerous stamps as if you're able to fussy cut it out you're better actually fussy cutting because you can get closer to your petals than you can with dark dyes always leave that little bit of a lip don't they that little bit of an edge so when you're using masking i think it's better to fussy cut anyway or die cut it out then finish it off by masking pinks a minimum we've got one magenta have I moved it now? Yeah. So yeah, hopefully you can see. I'm not going to do all of it because it's just the same all the way around. I think by now you will get the idea I just want to share that with you all just to give you some more ideas if you get around to doing your wreath to, to, uh, your wreath builder so there you go lovely I think so. and then I just coloured it in with petal pink dark and light uh, where's my image so yeah so it's, I just coloured it in I've got one of the square vellum doilies underneath and then that lovely label over the top and then just layered it on the two colours of a Cocoa Rose and Magenta Madness onto a square card. Uh, the square card I actually made, we don't do 12 by 12 white at the moment, so it's just 12, you get a 12 by 12 white uh, card stock and you obviously cut it at 6 inches and then it's 6 by 12 and then just score it at 6. So you can get two cards out of a 12 by 12. And then you can buy your envelopes from somewhere as well. They, they should be readily available. So yeah. I hope that's given you lots of ideas. There we go. You have to see my face now. There we go. Oh, I'm hot, look. I've been working hard and I didn't bring a drink. Oh, I have got a drink. Excuse me. Let's have a slurp of water. So, yeah, thank you very much for joining me, ladies. And I hope you did, you know, enjoy that. And I really do hope you get to have a go at the wreath builder. As I say, any problems, any questions, please just message me. That's what I'm here for. Uh, hopefully the tutorial's quite um fail safe we'll, we'll see fingers crossed it is fingers crossed i've explained it as well as i can so but any problems just give me a shout right thank you for joining me and i will see you next week with maybe christmas stuff i don't know oh, are we going to be on august next week yeah i think we will be won't we so um yeah it may be christmas i don't know yet i just i don't know it, 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 it all, all depend on how the feeling takes me Thank you, Nancy. All right, I'll see you all soon. See you next week. Thank you. Bye.